Okay, some of you have been asking about uh, probability distributions, the difference between discrete and continuous. Well, a discrete probability distribution is something where you have your random variable x and the associated probabilities with it. So we could have something as simple as uh, rolling a one-sided die, right? And it's either going to come up one, two, three, four, five, or six. And because our die is evenly weighted, right, they all come up with the same probability. So one sixth, one sixth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. So that's a probability distribution table for a discrete probability. When you get a continuous variable, you no longer have a countable number of options for x, right? x is your random variable. It can take on different values. If it's a discrete random variable, it has a countable number. Now that countable number could be really huge, like a million, but it's still countable. In order for it to be infinite, we now have to look at, instead of a table of values, we have to look at a graph of values. So a uh, simple example would be what's called a uniform distribution. And here, the height represents probability. And so let's say this is, um, this is a height of uh, 0.2. Okay. So over here, this equals 0.2. So this is a rectangle of height 0.2. So that's a probability. So that means any value here, pick some arbitrary x, the height above that, right up here, represents the probability of that. And that probability is 0.2. And since if we pick any x, there's a second one, it also has a height of 0.2, then that's why it's a uniform probability distribution. Everything has the exact same probability of 0.2. So, just like our standard probability distribution over here, we know that the sum right, of all the probabilities has to always add up to exactly one. So this area has to add up to exactly one. So if the height is 0.2 or 2 tenths, right, how long does this distance have to be? Well, it's basically 0.2 times what is going to give you an area of one, and that ends up being five. So this picture represents the case where you have a random variable x that is continuous, right? And it can take on, so it's continuous, and x can take on all values between 0 and 5. So it can be 1, it can be 1.1, 1.111, right? 2.1, 2.5, 2.57, 2.57, 0. The decimals can go on and on and on forever and ever and ever. What makes this so much different from our uh, discrete case is we can no longer ask what's the probability of 2.5. Because the probability of 2.5 is now considered an area, and it's an area in this shape. Well, if we're looking at x equals 2.5, it doesn't have any area above it because it's just a thin line. Now, of course, mine's, you can see area with mine. But what happens is we can no longer ask these questions. What we now have to ask is what's the probability that x is less than 2.5? Well, isn't 2.5 exactly half? way down here, so wouldn't less than 2.5 be all of this stuff over here, and wouldn't that answer just be 0.5, or 50%, right, because it's half the area. What if we ask the question, um, what's the probability that x is less than or equal to 2.5? Do you see how that's still the exact same thing? It's also 0.5. Well, if this one, let's uh, change colors. 
so if the one in red ends up being a half and our normal one here where we're also right less than or equal to is also a half the difference between those two is this one counts 2.5 this one doesn't include 2.5 and since including it doesn't change can you see that, that also further supports this idea that therefore the probability of exactly 2.5 is zero it doesn't add any area okay so that's the big difference between a continuous random variable and a discrete random variable I'll put up another video where we talk about uh, continuous random variables that are no longer uh, these uniform distributions. We'll go on to the normal curve and things like that.